take this opportunity to have or to talk and to give you a few ways of my people and my experience in the life of my people. Ne am dam wana ga shikungo sheha. Ne a shikhaushiwa na buchara ga tshe. Kuri ke kwa chitoi khiya kanya. A kwa tiwa ga jika tsaoha ho mita jiwa ga. Chitoi bulehara. E ga ta ga ke jengwe ya ga gore. Ke ke re ha ga ya kuni. Tse kom chitwa o tota tse kom koya. Yeah, <laughs> In 1997, the governments of Botswana began relocating people from their homes inside the central Kalahari game reserve to camps around the country. These people are known as the Sano Bushmen and they have lived in this region since about 2000 BC. By 2002, those who remained behind were forcibly removed from their ancestral land by the Botswana government. Kakamshi <laughs> In order to prevent tragedies like this from happening to other San, Roy joined the first people of the Kalahari. The first people of the Kalahari has played a major role in promoting the voice of the San and advocating for their human rights. For centuries, the San roamed the vast Kalahari deserts as hunter-gatherers.
They are one of the world's oldest peoples and have preserved their culture by passing down their knowledge from generation to generation. Botswana's constitution requires the government to give equal land rights to all citizens. To get around this, the government simply reclassified the San as fauna, not indigenous peoples. Originally, the CKGR was established as a place for the San to live freely without interference. As time passed, the government decided that the reserve should be set aside exclusively for wildlife. The objective is, is integration, because we, uh, we don't believe in separate development. We want people to integrate, but we know people have different socio-economic statuses. The government has initiated a subsidized farming program hoping to steer the nomadic hunter-gatherers onto fixed farms and away from their traditional ways. The, the, the intention is to, to take these people through a transformation process such that they will be able to live like anybody else. They will be able to enjoy the economic activities that are available within the, within the country. We think we are, we are getting somewhere. To take bushmans out from their land is like cutting the grass or picking the grass out from the, the soil. It's, it's killing them. Jumanda Khakalebone has been following in Roy's footsteps at FPK and is essential in continuing the work that Roy has started. I am born from the Central Kingdom Reserve. So I came to the organization at the right time when the relocation was starting people to be relocate, relocated. So as a human being and been feeling the pain of to be a bushman at school I've uh, been humiliated by other kids of my bushman so it makes me to take an action to show people on the outside world that a bushman is a human being somebody who have got a, a thinking and also have to be respected that's why I end up going to the first people of Kalahari to try to protect the rights of my people the farming that the government is subsidizing relies entirely on rainfall however rainfall in the Kalahari is scarce and often unpredictable this is one of the land which we are given after being relocated to do farming on it. I and my family decided to grow some crops to, to feed the family. The seed from corn, sorghum and, uh, and beans we got from the government uh, after being allocated this plot to, to, to plough. Instead of utilising what naturally thrives in the Kalahari, the government is encouraging the farming of non-native crops, such as corn, millet and wheat. It's hard to grow here because, you know, some people do not know how to plough or to grow some corn and everything. So you have to learn, but not train, but they just give you the, the land and then you have to learn yourself how to, to plough and to grow. As a people, the San have always enjoyed a communal, nurturing lifestyle. However, life in relocation camps, such as Neopade, hinders this tradition. Drawing property lines and building fences prevents the sand from interacting with one another as freely as they did in the past. Nukpade is the largest of the resettlement camps with about 1,100 residents. But here, the San are unable to hunt or gather. They could attempt to make the 100-kilometer journey to the nearest town for work, but this is extremely difficult without access to reliable transportation. Like looking at that old woman, she's just seated there doing nothing. So that's how she spent her day. She's always sitting doing nothing the whole day. 
The complacent atmosphere and lack of activity that exists in Yukade and other relocation camps has driven many San to alcohol abuse. Despite their adaptability, the issues they face today are forcing the sand to choose assimilation over cultural preservation. The suit filed by FPK against the government in 2010 for water rights resulted in yet another setback for the San. The magnitude of this loss is uncertain, but without water, the San cannot live in their ancestral lands. Although this ruling is discouraging, Roy and Jamanda will continue to fight for equality through the first people of the Kalahari. <laughs> The San have been able to overcome challenges while preserving their traditions for centuries. Today, however, their unique culture is in danger of being dissolved by ambiguous government objectives that hinder the San from making decisions about their own future. Some would say it is assimilate or die for the sand, and as time wears on, this notion becomes reality. The persistence of people like Roy and Jamanda has slowed the clocks to an extent. But without further aid, the stars over the sand's home will fade from the sky forever. One of the major challenges that Sam, Bushman, Basara, Kua, faces back in my country is recognition. Together with the access to land and resources. We are the indigenous people of Southern Africa. Our identity as well as our way of life is tied to hunting and gathering. The land is our mother which feeds and supports us. The animals are part of our society. The lions are our brothers and sisters, as well as the kuru, oryx, and giraffes. We are hunters, but we treat animals with respect. We are conservationists because we respect the land, we respect the animals, and we live in a sustainable way. But today, in Botswana, the sand are mainly dispossessed from their land and from their way of life. Over the past 30 years, one of the most difficult issues facing the Republic of Botswana and its people has been that the Central Kalahari Game Reserve. The Central Kalahari Game Reserve is the largest protected area in the country, covering an area of 52 and 730 square kilometers. 
The reserve was established in 1961 under the Fauna Proclamation Act number 1961 in order to meet two major objectives. One, to secure and protect the livelihoods and lifestyle of the Kua and other people who lived in the area. Two, to conserve the fauna, flora, and habitants of the, of the central Kalahari region. At the time the reserve was established, there were some 2,000 people who occupied the area or who moved in and out the reserve, depending on weather conditions. In 1961, all the people living in the reserve were mobile and living as hunters and gatherers. Probably people from outside of the reserve would come in and hunt and gather and trade with people living inside the reserve. They would sometimes keep a few of their livestock there, but this was not common practice. In 1997 and 2002, the government of Botswana relocated some 2,400 people to three resettlement sites of the premises of the reserve. One in the Hansi district, which is New Kari. Second in, Ka in Kwenen district, Kaudwani. And the third in the central district, Kere. The government said that this was necessary because, one, it was too expensive to provide services to what it said was a remote and scarce population. Two, people and wildlife were incompatible in a game reserve. Three, more effective assistance could be provided at settlements where infrastructure such as school and health posts could be developed. Tourism could be promoted inside the Central Galaric Reserve and the benefits would follow to the country as whole. The two location of people in 1997 to Kari, and 2002 had a number of effects. First, many people were not allocated the right to land that they were told that they would receive. Second, many of people who were promised compensation for the loss of their assets were not given either cash or livestock. Families were divided, with some people going to one settlement such as Nyotari and others to different settlements such as Kaudwani. The government shut down all the boreholes at places where people were living and destroyed the water storage tanks. The government also stopped all services such as food delivery, mobile health operation, and provision of pension and drought relief in the reserve. By the middle of 2002, there were fewer than 2,000 people still living in the reserve. There were over 2,500 people in the resettlement camps on the premises of the reserve who were wondering what their future were going to be. Some of the people in the new settlements were facing problems including hunger, thirst, and diseases. People were being arrested and jailed if they were in possession of billeton, that is dried meat, some of which was actually the meat of the cow that had died. During this years, people from my organization, the First People of Kalahari, came to Europe and North America. We visited the United Nations meetings with the Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights and the Working Group of Indigenous Population to ask for help and assistance. We were able to bring the government to court and we won a legal case in 2006 and 2011. That gave us the right to go back to our land, to hunt and gather, and to water. Unfortunately, the government had not honored the judgment of the first uh, CKGR court case, 
only people whose names were on the original affidavit in the first Santa CKGR legal case were allowed to return to the reserve. Others were arrested if they tried to enter. No hunting lessons were given to the people in the Santa Clara Game Reserve, which is true up to until now, November 2015. And now hunting is being banned in the entire country, except for the private property. Meanwhile, the government also allow mining companies to operate in the reserve. And one company named Jam Diamond has opened a large diamond operation in Hope in the southeastern part of the Central Galarium Reserve. Government has also given the right to private tourism companies in the reserve, Wellness Safari and Kwandu Safaris, who have two private lodges in the reserve. Unfortunately, the, living, the people living in the six communities in the reserve were not allowed to have tourist visit, visit them, and they were not employed by either the safari companies or the mining companies. They were also not allowed to visit the tourist lodges or the diamond mine so that they could get water. First people, First people of Kalahari and the CKG Arrest and Committee have continued to press for negotiation ag agreements with the government of Botswana. In March 2015, Royce Esana met with the president, Ian Kama of the Republic of Botswana, and the president told his ministers to go to the Central Kalahari Game Reserve and discuss the issues that residents of the, of the reserve were concerned about. This meeting took place at the end of August 2015 and the beginning of September. Government agreed that it would seek to do the following. To drill boreholes at both Motomelo and Malapo, to provide mobile health clinic to the to both the, both settlements, to transport uh, children back and forth to school, to provide pensions in the game reserve to people qualifying to receive them, to construct cultural visas at both settlements where tourists will be able to stay and observe Bushman culture. In principle, all residents of former residents of the Santa Clara Games will be now be allowed to take advantage of the new services as long as they can show that they have a real connection with the place. The government also said that it will hold further talks about hunting and other issues. Now we are hoping that the government will maintain its promises and that a new phase of relocation will begin between the government and the people of the Central Kalari Game Reserve. Even if there are hopes for a better future, most of the, of the SEN and Botswana are facing marginalization, discrimination, and deposition. Their land continues to be taken away, though the government legislation and policies by powerful individuals and by mining and tourist companies. We realize that this is due partly to global forces. A few weeks ago, October 21st, a case brought to court by the community of Ranyane in the Hansi district, which government was, <coughs> was seeking to resettle, was dismissed by the high court judge. The Ranyane people were forcibly relocated and left without water and services. The people of the Ogobango have seen their access to land and resources limited by the declaration of the area as a World Heritage Site in June 2014. In many areas of the country, people who were part of the government, community, <coughs> governments, community-based natural resources management have been their community trust taken over by private companies and individuals with the new land policies and the hunting ban. Many San and other people in Botswana have their ways of life and economic destroyed. The government's hunting ban and shoot to kill policy regarding people suspected on poaching are leading to death and arrest. In practice, that we are seeing is the criminalization of our way of life, our, our way of living, 
and our lives are being put on jeopardy. Now if I go hunt, as I always has done, and as my parents and ancestors have always done, I can be killed. The state has the right to kill me only because I'm living in my line with my beliefs, my values, and my background, and my identity. Finally, I would like to bring attention to the fact that the Sun communities, both human rights and education, come from their land, which holds everything for their survival. If my grandfather taught me how to hunt and gather, that is education. If we lose our land, we lose our knowledge and our dignity. So if we are not in position to protect land rights for the Sun communities, we will never ever have any rights, including the rights to education. I therefore ask the international community to monitor carefully and is go <coughs> what is going in on in Botswana to support social justice, to continue to support the Sun and to keep holding the Botswana government accountable regarding the rights of the Sun and other indigenous people and the minority.